they're handy mathematical tricks that you can use the rest of your life. First off, variational principles. variational method is that we have a functional, and a functional is a function of a function, and then we determine the function that makes that functional minimum. And in quantum, a, a handy functional is the expectation value of the energy. The expectation value of the energy Psi star H psi. So that's our expectation value. Uh, it's our operator and our wave function. And we express a functional as E square bracket. So this is saying that the energy is a functional of the wave function. And this is all based on what's called the, uh, the uh, calculus of variations. Uh, and we can go through this in a more strict fashion uh, using uh, Lagrangian multipliers. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just kind of step through and show you from kind of a practical perspective where it comes from and, and how to use it. So. Let's, let's say, let's say that we have a complete set of orthonormal eigenvectors and that are eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian. So let's say we have Hamiltonian psi n equals e n psi n. So this is going to be a, a set of functions. n is going to be our quantum number, so n goes from 1 to infinity. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, and now let's say that we have an arbitrary function. And we'll call it arbitrary function uh, phi. And this arbitrary function is uh, a square, inter square interval. Uh, it's you know, continuous in our Hilbert space. And because we know that our eigenfunctions are a good basis, that means that we can write any function as a sum of the eigenfunctions. So going back over here, we can write our expectation value of that arbitrary function. So we say, well, what if this arbitrary function were our wave function? And this is going to be our guess. So if we're guessing this is our wave function, and that's going to be integral v star h v over integral v star v. So I'm dividing it by uh, the complex conjugate of v times v, and this ensures that it's going to be normalized correctly. Because just because we have a, a, an arbitrary function doesn't mean that it's properly normalized. So we've got that. And now we can substitute in our, our expansion. And substituting in our expansion, we get sum n, sum n prime. So I'm doing it a double sum because we've got two uh, fees of a n star psi n star h a n prime v n prime divided by another double sum oh sorry there's an integral here too 
sorry, there's, there's an integral inside of a double sum. Integral a n star psi n star psi n prime a n prime. Now, because we know that these psi's are orthonormal, that means that our expectation value becomes sum n a n squared sum n a n squared. So the expectation value of the uh, guess function, our arbitrary phi, is written out as a sum of the coefficients in front of our expansion and the true eigen uh, values. Now, let's say that we're over here, and these ENs is equal to a set E0, E1, E2, E infinity. Well, E0 is the lowest energy, is the lowest uh, of the eigenvalues. So let's take this lowest eigenvalue and subtract it from both sides. Minus E0 and minus E0. Okay. Well, on this side, we know that En is less than or equal to all other E0, right? Because we listed them out. And we said E0 has to be the lowest, which means that uh, this term has to be equal to or larger than En for all of them which means that this side is going to be ready. <coughs> 0, which means that E phi greater than or equal to E0. So that means that if you take the expectation value for any arbitrary guess of a wave function, it will always be larger than or equal to E0 unless phi is exactly equal to psi, at which point it's equal to 0. And this gives us a method now, because it tells us that if we guess an arbitrary wave function, and we put in some set of parameters, if we modify those parameters to minimize the energy, if we find the minimum, then, and that is assuming that we have a function which is the right shape, but if we minimize it, it's going to give us the best guess of what the true wave function, what the true ground state wave function is. So that the method that we have here Change colors. The method is to one guess some trial wave function. The trial wave function will be a function of position and some set some set of parameters that are adjustable, or variational parameters. Next, 
we calculate the expectation value. using our guest wave function. And third, solve D, D, D alpha i equals zero. expectation value with respect to each of the parameters and set them equal to zero and solve those parameters. And that will give you the best guess uh, based on, on what this should be. Now, uh, limitations are, are that really you don't know how close you really are to the true wave function. Because, you know, if you guess something that's, you know, kind of wacky and it's not even close to right, your solution is not going to be even close to right. But the good news is that if you have something which makes a good uh, parameter set, for example, you've, you've got a, a set of uh, functions that add together and give you the right shape, uh, you can get a pretty good approximation uh, using this technique. Let me, uh, let me try to put this up. I, I've got a, a Mathematica example. And I'll see if I can put this on the screen. Times and it just doesn't work. The software is not the most. Uh, I gave my. Uh, that's right. It's like I gave my daughter uh, access to a laptop, just, just pushing the screen. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> it takes a second to warm up. Yeah, I'm wet too. Okay, so this is a, a simple example. Uh, this, uh, I wanted to solve a, whoo, close, a very sticky button. Patience is a virtue. Yes. There should be a focus button. I think there's an autofocus here. So yeah. Okay, so I want to solve a hydrogen atom. And I, I thought, okay, well if I don't if I don't know the solution, and our solution it, it should look like uh, it should have a, a kind of a cusp at zero and then come down and then Go out like that. But I said, well, if I don't know it, you know, I could guess a Gaussian. That's West's worst guesses, right? It, it piled the charge around the nucleus. Let's try that. So I guessed a Gaussian. I then uh, integrated it to make sure that I could uh, uh, normalize the coefficient in front. So this allowed me to determine that the coefficient in front of my Gaussian had to be A. That. So this is my Gaussian guess. This is what it looks like, my, my guessed <coughs> radial function. Next, I calculated the uh, numerator of the expectation value. Which I called probably top frac. Uh, so basically, I'm integrating 
uh, and this four pi r, that's because we're doing a, a integral spherically. I integrate r from zero to infinity of all these. So this is the uh, numerator. Do the denominator. Turns out it's one because I normalized it properly, but I didn't need to normalize it. If I just had any arbitrary I guess, uh, it would work. But I, I normalized it because non-normalized functions I find disturbing, so I, I just do it automatically. So that means my expectation value is the numerator divided by the denominator, this. Solve the derivative of the expectation value setting equal to zero for d, which is the uh, width of my uh, Gaussian. And I got this as my solution. And uh, if I substitute in the value of d into my uh, ex uh, expectation energy, it comes out like this. I simplified it, which didn't really change things much. And then I simplified it again, uh, setting all these constants equal to uh, zero just to uh, get something uh, that looked reasonable. Now, if I, if I collect these terms and substitute the Rydberg constant in, I get a ground state energy of 8 thirds Rydberg constant divided by pi minus. Now, in contrast, we know what the exact energy is. Where is that? I didn't solve it here. Uh, well, it's one Rydberg. So we should get minus one Rydberg, and we actually got 0.8. So we're accurate to within about 15% of, of what the, the true uh, should be. Uh, which isn't, isn't uh, right there. sorry, we're accurate to about 15% uh, of what it should be. So with, with a bad guess, it's still pretty accurate. Uh, if instead I guessed a functional form such as this, which, remember when we were stepping through the uh, hydrogen atom, we knew what the functional form would be based on uh, taking the limits of r going to zero and r going to infinity. We knew that this is going to be one of the, one of the shapes. Uh, step through all the same steps. See, now it's got the proper form with a little cusp at zero and tailing, tailing down. And if you do this, get the uh, numerator, denominator, expectation value, uh, solve for the, ex the uh, width of function, and step down here, you get minus one Rydberg. So you can get the exact right energy without knowing it. Of course, again, you wouldn't necessarily know this is the right solution either. Uh, what you would know is that if you try a bunch of different functional forms, all of them would have a higher energy than this. So there's something to be said for kind of exhausting the solution if you, you don't have a, a method that works for you. Uh, let's turn on the light. I had a homework assignment for students. It must have been, I think, probably the last time I taught this class. And I asked them to solve for the wave function of a uh, particle trapped in something like this, some box, zero to L. Uh, and I had this student in uh, electrical engineering that came and said, well, you know what I'm going to do? I, I, I'm, I'm going to guess that my solution is a top hat function. That. 
And what the student did was he didn't just test a top hat function, he tested a top hat function in which he could uh, vary the width and he could vary the center position. And he basically took this out and expanded it to 100 different functions, let the computer crank on it, which now would take you know, two minutes compared to you know, 20 minutes back then, and he got pretty close to an exact solution. Uh, and in a similar fashion, if you wanted to do, say, the, uh, we wanted to solve you know, the radial wave function of an atom, right? Well, we know that the atom is going to have a uh, spherically symmetric radial wave function, which means that if we wanted to, we could be adding together a bunch of spherical shells. And if you have enough of these spherical shells, you get the right answer. Uh, something which is handy is Gaussians. Gaussians, one of the uh, numerical solvers that people use for molecular calculations, expands the wave function as a linear sum of Gaussians. The software package is called Gaussian. Uh, go, believe, go figure, but uh, that's what they do. Other solvers, they take the uh, SPD orbitals, and we know what these are for hydrogen, and they use those as the uh, guess functions, and they guess the solution to uh, molecular wave functions as, as a linear sum, linear sum of atomic orbitals. And that's the technique. Uh, other techniques, for example, uh, density functional theory, where it traditionally came from is because we were assuming uh, plane waves as, as a wave, as a uh, good guess, and still is one of the more popular uh, methods. Plane waves are extremely robust, but they are computationally more expensive than other techniques. So, uh, for example, people doing the plane wave method, they're going to have much lower efficiency and much longer, larger calculations than people using atomic orbitals. But people using atomic orbitals or Gaussians, they don't necessarily know they have a full basis set. So the people over here that are trying to guess uh, you know, some linear sum of atomic <coughs> orbitals, they have to be extremely careful to make sure that they actually have a, a, a proper uh, basis set in their, in their guess. So that's variational method. 